Hey everyone, how's it going? And welcome to another weekly episode where we look at some book covers, talk about why they work, and offer a few ideas on how to make them even better. I am your humble host, MLS Weech. And uh, what I do is I look at those covers and then let you vote your, for your favorite in the link down below. Speaking of down below, my author link is down there. I'm an Amazon self-published independent author. And uh, if you visit my site, and take a look at what books I've written and see if any of them interest you. I would really appreciate it. So this is uh, one of the more special uh, episodes we've done because this is, uh, uh, as far as I can tell, the 52nd week. We have now uh, been reviewing book covers for a full year. And so what we're going to do is we're going to look at these covers and you'll be able to vote for your favorite. And then next week, uh, you'll be able to vote for the best cover out of the month of March. Uh, and uh, I know it seems weird because it's, it's, it, it'll be March next week, uh, but there are some shorter weeks in there somewhere. But uh, once you look at uh, your favorite for March, then we will look at the 12 winners from throughout the year and let you pick your favorite and announce the MLS Week book cover of the year. I don't currently have a plan to try this again, um, uh, didn't generate the interest, uh, that I think you want. And part of my job is to make sure that we're giving you content that you're interested in. Uh, I do have plans for other things that I want to try and I'm open to trying this again. Uh, but I want to, I want to make sure that I'm, I'm producing content that you guys are interested in following and discussing. And this hasn't seemed to be it at the moment. Uh, and that's okay. Uh, it's still kind of fun to do, uh, which is why I'm open to doing it again. And uh, I certainly hope that uh, you guys vote and stick with it. And if you like it, let me know. And uh, I'll think about bringing it back. But I do want to finish it because I'm just the kind of person who wants to finish things he starts. Uh, so I'll get into that. But I can't finish it without naming the winner from last week. And the winner from last week, the week three uh, March book cover, is House of Sky and Breath by Sarah J. Moss. Um, this cover is indeed beautiful. Uh, the line art is fantastic. The rendering has got great energy, good use of sampling where the color of the text matches the color of the moon. It's a, a sharp color. Uh, um, I'm glad they used the gold because the blue might've gotten a little hard to see on the figure. Uh, so this cover is just beautiful. Uh, congrats to Sarah J. Moss. Congrats to the designer of this cover. Best of luck in the March book cover of the month competition. And now we get to look at the last seven book covers uh, for the year. Uh, I'm feeling a little nostalgic also from just being up front. Uh, I have uh, felt better in my life. Uh, it's not a COVID thing. Uh, uh, this is more related to some ear issue that I'm having. Uh, I perforated my ear. Uh, I'm not even sure how I did that. Uh, so I might seem a little bit out of it, uh, but the show must go on. Uh, so please be a little bit patient with me. <clears throat> uh, the first cover we're going to look at, I didn't do it on purpose, but it kind of feels appropriate. Uh, I don't know what Michael Andelay does uh, other than write. I'm not sure he sleeps, eats. Uh, I don't know what he does, but this man cranks out books. Uh, and he wrote this book with Sarah Mufke. Uh, it's The New Generation. That's a great book cover. Um, the dragon, it looks cool. Uh, it's a little wonky in the head area. Um, I do like that the wings of the dragon have a degree of translucence. Uh, if if a, if a being's wings were so thick, you could not see light through them, then they would be too heavy to fly. Uh, but then you, if, if you really want to get too nerdy, then you'd be like, well, oh, in order for, you know, because uh, 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 an animal has to have a wingspan that is a significant uh, degree wider than it is. Uh, so I don't know. Uh, but the nerd in me likes that you can't make the wings as big as they really have to be. Uh, otherwise, they, they, they'd, be, they'd be more monstrous than the dragon itself. Uh, but at least giving that little bit of a nod. Uh, uh, um, I appreciated it. I appreciated it. Uh, the head, not so much. Uh, the figure's backlit. It's a pretty dynamic pose. I wish the legs were positioned a little bit differently. But the light is incredible. The art in itself, the, the style, the line, the realism of the, the appearance of the figure is, is great. Um, so I don't know that it's best. Uh, he actually has a winner 
uh, uh, and and he's he's got a dog in the book cover of the year fight already. Um, not that I'm pro dog fights; it's just a, a phrase that I've used since my youth. Please, no, I don't approve of that particular thing. Um, but uh, he he might have another one if you guys vote on this particular one. The color's good. The art is good. Um, the the figures that were rendered maybe could have been rendered a little differently, uh, but it doesn't mean that they're not cool to look at. The next cover we're going to look at is Age of Villains by C.C. Uh, I'm going to say uh, Eki. It's, that's what I'm going to go for. Uh, if you know how to pronounce it, let me know. Give me some sort of pronunciation thing down in the comments. Uh, this is a straight up comic cover, um, but it's beautiful. Uh, I, I love the lightning in the foreground, uh, kind of reminiscent of Matrix way back in the day, not the one that came out just recently. Um, little interesting choice on the color. I get it. The, the green is is kind of a theme. They, they, do, uh, they do series, um, but green with this uh, background is uh, a little hard on the eyes, uh, but it doesn't change the figures and the energy that this cover creates. Uh, um, those are the reasons why I felt this cover was deserving. Next cover we're going to talk about is Gray, what? Gray Mother Mountain. Uh, each time I look at this, it's, it's even more cool. So when I first saw this cover, I thought, oh, that's a wicked looking dragon. And then I realized, wait, no, that's a forest. Wait, no, that's a forest that's rendered in such a way that the, the, the background, and they call it figure ground, uh, the elements woven together with a few details. It's not it's not pure figure ground per se, but they wove everything together so that the dragon and the forest were more holistic. Uh, that is that. I'm, honestly, I'm I'm just so thrilled with how they rendered that all together. Um, and the more I look at this cover, the more I love it. Um, no amount of looking at it can make me appreciate the text, the way it was arranged, or the color. Um, I feel like this is one of those situations where a brilliant artist uh, produced a beautiful, beautiful poster or beautiful, beautiful book cover, and, and then a well-meaning but perhaps undertrained author uh, slapped some text on it. Uh, uh, if I'm wrong, I'm sorry. Uh, uh, Elise Russell is the author, and I'm sorry if, if that's not what happened, but it really feels that way from a de design perspective. Uh, notice how the, 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 the letters grouping is great. Grouping is when you put things together because things that are close look like they belong together and that's fine. But when they almost overlap, it conflicts with the eye. Uh, when you use any color, you need better contrast and the blue green, uh, I struggle a little bit on colorblind. That's why I'm a little even more ornery with, uh, using color for a font, uh, but in this case, it, it overlaps with the misty background and it affects uh, the legibility a little bit. Um, you know, if you just space it out just a little bit, it doesn't have to get crazy, but just a little bit. Uh, and then maybe play with a couple other colors if you insist on using something other than white or black, um, something that stands out, um, then that'll help. Uh, uh, That'd take this really amazing cover and 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 really make it pretty dominant, in my opinion. Uh, you know, but my opinion doesn't have to matter. If enough people vote, the the opinion of the majority will always win because it's a voting thing. The next cover we're going to look at is "Making Eden" by K. R. S. McIntyre. Uh, this is a simple silhouette. It's it's well done, well rendered. It's got good layering where the the vines. Uh, go in front of and behind each letter of the text, and that's always great. Um, I always like it when silhouettes allow for people to see feet. Um, uh, feet are very hard to draw, uh, and most people will find some convoluted way to hide those feet uh, so that they don't have to put in the effort. Uh, and this one not only has feet, but it has tension building in that they're clearly running and when you have a figure running on ground and the 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 contact isn't made that tension is intense 
it makes it very, very hard to look away because you'll sit there and wait. That's why when uh, you're doing sports photography and, and they like it when there's some element of separation or some element of tension, it just helps with uh, an image. And this does that well. Uh, it's not the greatest cover I've ever seen in my own opinion, uh, but it is a very well done silhouette with a nice framing element and a nice use of layering. So it's taking a couple concepts, putting them together to create something that's pretty good. All right. Next cover we're gonna look at is Zero Point Horizon by Trevor W. Goodchild. Uh, so this is pretty interesting. Uh, I. I sincerely hope that that's a bodysuit, if I'm just being honest. Um, but we're looking at a subject from behind, no pun intended. Um, uh, so it, it's it's just a matter. I like the cityscape. I like the, uh, uh, the colors and the shapes of the design give me a bit of a humorous feeling. Um, I, I like the 80s feel. I'm probably going to gravitate towards 80s themed anything. Um, uh, so it, it, it has elements that tie back to the 80s, elements that kind of tie to some sort of humorous aspect. Um, even the, the, the figure kind of has a Schwarzenegger Terminator kind of feel to it. Um, uh, and so it's, it's, it's an interesting combination of visual elements. Uh, if I had a little more time to stare at it, uh, if that's not a bodysuit, I, I would, I would not, uh, I probably wouldn't have run with it. Uh, but you know, at least we're, we're, we're toward the back of the subject. I don't know how to do it without coming up with a pun. Um, uh, but you know, that's part of the trial of looking for it. You look at these little icons and then you, look at them a little bit differently. Um, it's still decently rendered art. Uh, obviously, when I was looking at it, it wasn't my favorite of the seven that I was looking at, but I look at somewhere in the neighborhood of 70 book covers at least each time uh, I, I pick the seven. And sometimes I'm picking the best one out of what I see, even if it's not a great cover in and of itself. There are other covers here and maybe you like this one. Maybe this is kind of your thing. You can vote for it. That's why I make sure to get seven in the competition. Anywho, uh, we're gonna look at uh, The Secret of the Broken King uh, by Eliza Rain. Now I see this other name on there, Rose Wilson, and I don't really know what's going on there. Uh, Amazon does not credit Rose Wilson as one of the authors, maybe the main character is Rose Wilson. Uh, and that's honestly the thing that bugs me. I got this name on this cover and I have no idea the relationship of this name. It was put right next to the author's name. So I really assumed that, that Wilson was a co-author, but nothing on Amazon tells me that. Um, so I, I don't know what's going on with that. Uh, the text is well done. Uh, again, we have some layering elements. It's pretty cool. Um, what am I looking for? Uh, I actually forgot what that thing is called. Trident. There we go. Uh, it's a pretty cool looking trident with uh, lighting metal is actually harder than people think it is. Uh, uh, so you have to take measures to let the light make metal look cool without blowing out too many portions of the metal you're trying to illuminate. Um, and this rendering indicates awareness on how that would have been done. Uh, so that's pretty cool. It's just a basic text plus visual element. It creates a nice anchor. Uh, it draws the reader straight down through everything. It does lead you all the way through, and then you can leave if you want. Uh, most books, a lot of books do that, if not most. Uh, so I can't really knock it too much. Uh, it's just driving me nuts. So if you know who Rose Wilson is or her relationship to this book, please let me know. Uh, uh, cause if, if she was involved, I want to give her credit. Um, and then we only got one more to look at. So I'm a little sad. Uh, last one we're going to look at is Hunter's Moon by Lindsay Hall. And this has great color, 
effective framing, good art, decent landscape, cool line art. Um, no one of the techniques is just awe-inspiring or amazing, but, you know, they all kind of work together to, to give the cover a little bit of oomph and maximize the uh, author text and the title text. So the people who like the art have art to look at, the, the people who want to know, uh, 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 but the cover itself sort of pitches you on the idea that um, this story is, is um, more driven by plot. Uh, usually uh, it's kind of a trend I see. If the, if the book title text is the dominant visual element, uh, i.e. it's the biggest part, or at least it's equally weighted with the, the sphere, the globe, whatever you want to call it. Um, when they do that with the author text, uh, it's, trying to, it's trying to sell itself. Um, if the author text is big, then it's selling who the author is. These are just standard design concepts. Uh, that doesn't necessarily mean the art inside doesn't kind of foreshadow what's going on. Um, it just minimizes that. So it's, it's a, less of a visual impact than it is a announcement in, Hey, here's, here's what this book is. Here's what it's about. Uh, I, you know, the font's okay. Uh, it's well arranged. Uh, the grouping may not be that different from the first one that we, uh, uh, uh from, uh, Gray Mother Mountain. Um, but the, the overlap in this case is not one letter coming over another letter. Uh, the R swoops into the gap of the N. And so they fit together better without like cramming onto one another. And that's the difference. Uh, so that is the seventh book cover. And that is, I don't know what seven times 52 is, but we've done that many book covers. Um, so I am so grateful to those who stuck with me. Uh, this isn't the last time you're going to hear me talk about book covers. That's coming up in a little bit, uh, but I'll probably do something to, to give you a reminder on what the, the four nominees are for March. Uh, and then I will definitely do one to tell you uh, what 12 books you have to choose from to pick the book cover of the year competition. So thank you all for uh, your interest. Uh, please stick around for other things you're going to try. Uh, just to give you a little foreshadowing, uh, I'm going to start doing a series of episodes where I take you from an idea from a book to a, uh, a published book on Amazon and then things I know how to do with marketing. So I'm not going to get too much into that because it's something I'm still learning and working on myself. Uh, but uh, I know if I had it to do all over again, I'd really like it if someone was like, no, start here. This is how you do it. This is how you write the book. This is how you revise the book. These are uses for different editors. And I want to answer all those questions. And my hope is that if you want to write a book and get it published, as you go through these episodes, you can do that. Uh, so that'll be my goal. That'll be my next project. Um, uh, it, it, it's actually going to be, in my opinion, less demanding because I, I don't have to do as much setup as I do looking for these covers, finding them, identifying them, that kind of thing. Uh, and I'm also not going to be so bound by the timeline. Uh, uh, once a week is a great goal, and I'm going to try to maintain that. Uh, but um, having to do it all and coalesce it, I might pick a different day to do these as well. Uh, it, it, it's an interesting first step in this journey. I hope that you will continue to like and subscribe. Um, and if this next project interests you, let me know. Please let others know. Thank you always. Thank you so much. Uh, please remember to vote for your favorite link down below. Uh, no, I'm not doing another book cover of the year for uh, 2022. Uh, but but you know, people have shown uh, some interest in this, and uh, uh, giving a winner is just satisfying, and I I want it to be satisfying for those who have been involved. Thank you as always. Please enjoy your weekend. Stay safe out there. Uh, and as always, God be with you. Bye.